So how would you make your guitar sound like a piano? The oversimplified answer would be spread triads and voice leading. I've always had a strong admiration for piano players and what they can accomplish musically. Some of the piano players who really influenced me are Oscar Peterson, Hiromi Uhara, Shai Maestro, Brad Maldow, Tigran Hamasian, the list goes on. I think what I admire so much and I'm kind of jealous of is the fact that the piano is so good at being a full band. You're playing rhythm and you're playing a bass line and you're playing a melody, everything is covered. Also, I'm quite jealous of the incredibly wide range that the piano has in comparison to the guitar and all the kinds of cool chords that can come from that. If you like what we see here today, please comment, like, subscribe. I really appreciate it. It really helps the channel. And check the description below for links to my Instagram, Patreon, and Twitch for more content and more lessons. And let's get into it. So why spread triads? Well, it's not just spread triads. It's just including them as well. Again, piano players can cover a really wide range, and spread triads just have that open feeling where you're really hearing just how far away the notes are from each other. For instance, a C bar chord is a really familiar shape and sound and sounding shape. And a C spread triad and second inversion has three less notes in the voicing, and it shares the same notes. There's no like secret notes I'm playing or anything like that. But when you hear that voicing, it sounds like you're covering more ground. It's the illusion that you're covering more ground. Let's listen to some spread triads in application. Here's a one, four, five, and C with some more typical guitar voices. Let's try that same thing with spread triads. And just for fun, let me expand on that. Another thing to consider is voice leading. A lot of the history of guitar doesn't involve amazing voice leading because it's really not required in certain genres. Sometimes you just want to make a lot of noise and hit your guitar and bar chords and power chords are great for that. Also, if you are using cowboy chords, bar chords, power chords, you are still voice leading. It just might be a little clunky. By clunky, I mean voice leading in a way that people would rarely sing. A big plus to voice leading is melodic comping, which can make certain parts of a song shine. Take the song The Bones by Marin Morris, for example. The intro starts like this. As you can see, the third, a particularly melodic choice, is the top voice on each of those chords. If I played that same intro with more common voicings, it might not have the same impact. I could strum my way through it and it would sound more like this. pick my way through it in an effort to create some sort of delicate impact like the original and it would sound like this. What I love so much about the original intro and verse is that it's such a difference from the chorus that when you start strumming in the chorus you're strumming regular chords and it sounds new and surprising and huge. The transition between the two parts will be especially impactful in like a duo singer plus guitar player setting, or really any like super stripped down setting. It certainly is a lot more complicated than just playing the cowboy chords to something, but there's a lot of ways to practice and the practice itself ends up sounding gorgeous. For instance, here's me running spread triads right up a major scale. practicing, it sounds nice, win-win. Once you get comfortable with triads, start adding the seventh, genre permitting, and after that move on to your ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth extensions. And then after that, intentionally mixing up your comping with spread and closed voicings. Let's do that one, four, five, and C major again, and I'll start switching up voicings and note choices. <laughs> Knowing 
several shapes of chords and the scales that go along with them helps a lot when trying to play new voicings that you haven't necessarily practiced before. A fun exercise to get better at visualizing a scale pattern around the note of a chord is to play up a scale while simultaneously holding the root third or fifth of a chord. Here's what I'm talking about. This can lead to some tricky fingerings and it's worth noting like you don't want your hand to hurt you just want to challenge yourself to think of new voicings so if you end up with some super awkward voicings don't feel like you owe it to this exercise to muscle through that pain best case scenario though this can lead to some comping styles that are not common for guitar players for instance here i'll hold the root and the third of an a major chord and work my way up the scale from there <laughs> The idea of playing a little melodic riff more as a series of chord voicings than single notes isn't as common with guitar and has a really nice sound. If I try to make little melodies with some of the available notes, I can end up with something like this. I hope all that gives you a lot to work on. Those are areas that I've had and continue to have a lot of fun with over the years. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next week.